you know, I don't care if you're black or white or Jewish or Christian or Muslim, whatever. When you're screaming stuff, it's got to make sense. It's got to make sense. Right? So when you're telling me, and uh, this guy is a black guy screaming this, you know, everybody wants to say, oh, we have to believe. But he's wrong. He's dead wrong. Dead wrong. No, on this subject, he is dead wrong. And I don't know the guy from Adam. No, I don't either. But I, I know on this subject, he's dead wrong. He's dead wrong. Michael, you're back. I'm back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> different conditions yeah. now. Totally different job you're yes. doing now. I'm, I'm in plain clothes now. I know. I don't Soft know the clothes. LAPD thing. <laughs> now, you were on LAPD for... 32 and a half years. Wow. Yeah, long that time. That is crazy. Long so, time. And you finally... Uh, I pulled the plug. Cut the yeah, leash. I cut the leash. <laughs> well, I didn't cut the leash completely. I still okay. hold leashes, but... <laughs> okay. Yeah, you said you're still much. training, right? Still train, yes. Okay. So what, what's your uh, new thing? I know you don't want to go into too many details. No, so now I work as uh, executive protection for a CEO of a bank. Okay, cool. Yeah. But a lot of, no dogs involved? No dogs involved. Okay. No, not yet. <laughs> you better get a good dog <laughs> yeah. team. Who knows the future holds? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, you got to put dogs in. Dogs need to be everywhere. Everywhere, I'm with that. You still got dogs? I still have dogs, yeah. What do you have? I have a little Bichon Frise. Perfect. Dylan. IPO three or two or <laughs> IPO four. I made it up. Like, He's really good. <laughs> but that's all. That's the only dog you got. That's the only dog I have right now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking. You know, you gotta find that right dog. It's gonna hit you the right yeah. way, the right time. What was the last dog you had that was a protection dog? The last dog personal. that I had that was a personal protection dog was my dog Caesar. And that was your dog on the force? No, no. He was a uh, he was a protection dog that I bought for uh, uh bought for a celebrity oh. or an athlete and. Uh, he ended up not having time to take care of him, and he gave him to me. He went to Germany to get this dog and everything, mm. and he was the best dog we've ever had. Wow. Yeah, he died early this early last year. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Good German dog, Shepherd? Dog. German Shepherd, yeah. That, that's how I got Maya. Yeah. <laughs> Maya was bought by somebody to breed her. Right. And then um, then I was going to train her, and right. the other guy was going to take her, and then I was like, she didn't get along with females. No. <laughs> and and, she, and they had a puppy, female puppy. Ah. For her. And I said, you don't want this dog. Right. So what do you want her? And I was like, ah, I, you, you just don't want dogs the same age. Because I got Goofy and Maya, they're both 12, 13. Oh, yeah. But I ended up with her. So, yeah, I get that. No, I was good. He was, we had the dog. He was paying me for a while to mm -hmm. take care of, to keep the dog. I had that too. And then finally he was like, hey, you know what? This is costing. I go, right. hey, I'll yeah. take him. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. No, so he was an IPO3 dog? Or? He was, yeah. yeah. He was nice. He was a beautiful dog. Phenomenal nice. dog, yeah. Yeah, every once in a while that happens. Yeah, he's a Thomas Haas special. Okay, yeah, we know <laughs> yeah, Thomas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the blonde bomber. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, one thing I want to talk to you about today is um, something that's going on. It's I, I, I'm glad you're here because we're, we're going to talk about a bunch of different dog stuff, but there's a bill in California. I think this really relates to you because right. you were head of LAPD K9. Right. So this assembly bill, 70, 742, and I was taken aback by it being a dog guy. But there was some language in there that I was a little concerned about. Right. Right. Like, I don't want to see people unjustly hurt because they're black, gay, transgender, you know, foreign, whatever their belief is. Right. And I feel this bill is written in a way that, in my opinion, is kind of like stoking some real dangerous stuff. Absolutely. You know, and, and it makes me think, you know, I, I know dogs, you know dogs. I don't think it's right the way it's written. So can we talk about that today? Absolutely. Um, because let's look at yes. it. And, and it's a bill that they're, what they're really trying to do. Do you know the bill pretty well? I or? do. Okay. So why don't you talk about it instead of me talking about it? Because you're more interesting. Right. So what they're trying to do is do away with bite dogs, so to speak, in the state of California. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the problem with it, though, is that I was really surprised. I was talking about it earlier. Is mm -hmm. that the one arena where dogs are really control wise and working wise and really well trained is here on the West Coast, you know. And, yeah. and and the good part about that is because we all pretty much do the same thing, you know. And we're all on top of our game training. And that starts at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. If you go to Atlas Horse International, you go to see the Reavers. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're putting in work. They're putting work. in, and they're not just certifying dogs. I've been on trips with with Dave Reaver and Mike Reaver. Mm -hmm. And I see dogs that I think are phenomenal, and they're like, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to take that dog. Yeah, It's the same thing in their classes. If they see mm -hmm. in the class this dog can't get the control levels they want, mm -hmm. they're going to take that dog out of the class and get a handler a new dog. Yep. You know, and the problem with this bill, though, is that they're not being realistic about it. Mm -hmm. And what they're trying to do is bring up a racial component to it mm -hmm. to stoke the fires in everybody's brains. Because if right. you say something's racial, automatically it's wrong. Yeah. Without a doubt, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's not the case. Right. I mean... Do black people get bit? Absolutely. 
Yeah. Do brown people get bit? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do white people get bit? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do Asians get bit? Absolutely. I was going to say Asians. Yeah. But 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 at the same <laughs> right. time, yeah. do are most black people found? Are they bit? Nope. Right. Are most white people found? Are they bit? Nope. Mm-hmm. The majority of people we find aren't bit. Mm-hmm. I think LAPD right now, and I was just looking at it because I was there uh, last week. I think their bite ratio right now is around, around 19, 20%. Okay. So that means out of 100 dogs that are sent out, 100 searches, 20% end in a bite. That means of, of uh, not, not just sent out. Because if we, if we go with how many times they've been sent out, yeah. that number drops even more. I'm saying these are bona fide people that were found by the dog. Oh, okay. Only 20% of them, or 19 or 20% of those people, were made, or the dog made contact with them. The dog bit them. Wow. Exactly. So the way LAPD does their bite ratio is, it's fines versus bites. Mm-hmm. So how many people do we find, and how many of those people did we bite? And that's what right. we look at. Yeah, we don't look at it by deployment. If we look at it by deployment saying, hey, we did... 2,000 searches, mm-hmm. and out of that 2,000 searches, only 20 people got bit. Oh, our right. bite risk should be way, it'd be really low. But we've been uh-huh. realistic about it, and that's, yeah. and that's the part that they're not putting out there. Yeah, We're very realistic about it. We could very mm-hmm. easily say, hey, we did 2,000 searches, and only five people got bit. Mm-hmm. Well, how many did you find? Well, we only found five. <laughs> right. Oh, so you only right. found five, but you bit five. <laughs> right. So we've been honest about it, though. Yep. Yep. These are people we found, mm-hmm. and of those people we found, these are the amount of people that got bit. Wow. 20%. Yes. And on, on those statistics, are what, what kind of people are they sent out to find? Like what, what, what so are common the, causes? They're sent out to find people that broke the law. It's the number mm-hmm. one thing. Right. As a matter of view, again, the color I can allegedly. run. The, allegedly, right. yeah, right. allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. But mm-hmm. I can run the colors, the spectrum of the rainbow, okay? It's, the first thing is, are you an arm, a misdemeanor suspect who's reasonably believed to be armed? Mm-hmm. If you're reasonably believed to be armed, we're going to search for you. Mm-hmm. If you are, or if you are allegedly committed, if you allegedly committed a felony, we're going to search for you. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by search for you, mean that the police have actively tried to stop you. Mm-hmm. You actively resisted and ran away and found some place to go hide. And then they call us and they set containment up. They call the canines in, and the canines go out there and search for the suspect. Okay, that's how most departments operate in the state. So I want to talk about that because you're you're making, and, and this is really important. We break this down. A person has already evaded the police. Yes. So it's not like just like, oh, go f- here's a dog, go find this guy. No. So we've already made con- some kind of contact with Absolutely. the person? Absolutely. Okay. We've, we've, we've made contact. We've given commands, all those things. Okay. And this is just the dog now is just our one more further step in our arena of de-escalation. Mm-hmm. And because a dog is a de-escalation tool. Yeah, let's talk about you that. You know, so if you think about it like this, you know, if I take six cops and say, hey, Go search that one block perimeter mm-hmm. for this outstanding suspect. First of all, it's going to take them way longer than with a dog. So we're going to talk about taking a uh, maybe a one-hour search with a dog, turn it into like a four- or five-hour search with six officers. Mm-hmm. But what you lose, though, is you lose that ability of reaction time. Mm-hmm. Reaction time for the, the officers and reaction time for the suspect. And what I mean by that is if those officers are searching and an officer pops a trash can open, and he has his gun now and he pops a trash can open and he looks in there. There's two seconds between him and that suspect is what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. And that two seconds is built off perception. Mm-hmm. What I see in his hand are perceived to be a gun. Does he perceive me as a threat? So one of us can be hurt. That can be really bad for one of us. Okay. It can be very deadly for one of us yep. or both of us. Mm-hmm. Change that scenario and add a dog to it. The dog goes to the trash can. He barks at it. He lets us know that the suspect is in a trash can. Mm -hmm. Now, we have the ability to do a few things. Number one, call the dog back to us. Mm -hmm. Then get cover. Mm -hmm. So now we put ourselves in a position where even if if this person decides to start not listening, we're in a position of advantage and position of safety, so we still have reaction time. Right. But then the the best thing happens. We're able to communicate now and negotiate with that suspect and have dialogue. So mm-hmm. we just turn this whole thing into a talking game now, mm-hmm. as opposed to putting our hands on him game or a taser game or a shooting game. Because one of the things they're saying is that the taser is less lethal. But what you're saying to me now is you might not even need to deploy the laser. Absolutely. Taser, sorry. By using a dog. Ex- absolutely. So why aren't people talking about that? Because they don't want that narrative <laughs> to get out there. Right. They only want to show the bad part of it. Now, let's not be crazy. Do bad things happen sometimes when you use a dog? Absolutely. Sure. But bad thing, bad things happen when I'm a cop and don't have a dog. Yeah. Bad things happen in, in any arena, right? Mm-hmm. But they want to focus on that. Mm-hmm. 
And I can tell you, though, that there's more good to it. Just this morning, I was watching the news as I was getting ready for work. And uh, in Mission Hills, not too far from here, in the, over the hill there in the valley, they had a, uh, an armed robbery of a convenience store or something like that. Three or four suspects. As the police pull up, they all start running. Well, these three or four suspects don't run back into the store. They run into the adjacent neighborhood. Yep. So now you see the officers and they, they air, the airship, the helicopter did a big pan on it. They had about three or four blocks contained. Mm. So these three or four guys are somewhere within these three or four blocks. Right. How do the politicians who want to put forth this bill, mm -hmm. what would they have us do in that situation? Right. Would they rather we fold our things up and leave? They absolutely would. But there's one group of people who would not want that. And those are the people who are in those homes right, right there. Okay. And they might be black and brown. A, black and brown. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because at that time, again, they don't care if the bad guy is black, brown, or green. Right. I don't want this armed suspect in my yard. Yeah. I don't want this armed suspect trying to get into my house. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many canine searches I've been on where we've actually found the suspect that has made his way into someone's house. Inside. Inside. Oh. Inside. And guess what? There are black people who've come to the door like, mm -hmm. uh, hey, uh, you know, we're searching the yards for suspects. Do you have any thing? And they give you that look and they're kind of like looking behind <laughs> them. And they're kind of like, <laughs> their hand, like right. you know, right. hey, you do, do me a favor, come outside for a second. Yeah. So, again, mm -hmm. they want that to happen. Sure. Now, don't, again, they don't want bad things happening. They don't want bad police work happening. Yeah. But they but they want us there. Yeah. I mean, I see so much of this. And I mean, I'm, I'm a white guy as white as I guess you could be. I just have such an issue with this black and white divide that I don't think happens between you and me. We're friends. Absolutely. Or my other friends who might be of color or whatever. I think it's something that's just, it's just shoved on us from like, the white guy hates you or the black guy, he's this. Or It's like, it's just, it's just, I mean, I don't swear, it's freaking nuts. It is. And it's, it angers me. It is. Every time somebody is stoking that flame, I think somebody's got to speak out. Absolutely. You know? And that's why I wanted to talk to you about this because... Let's talk about it for a second when you're talking about deploying a dog. Like, I mean, people always say, oh, the dog's going to bite the guy because he's black. I mean, that's about as nutty as I've ever heard. The dog has no clue. Right. Colorblind. He has no clue what color you are. He has yeah. no clue. He just knows that he is working air scent. Mm -hmm. He is looking for that concealed scent, and you happen to be it. Mm -hmm. The dog doesn't know if you're black, brown, yeah. Asian, and white. he doesn't care. Doesn't care. Dog has no clue. <laughs> right. Doesn't care. Right. You know, and, and, and more importantly, to be honest with you, we don't care. Right. Why would we? Right. Why would we? Yeah. You know, and are there some bad white people in the world? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Are there some bad black people in the world? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But you and I get along with each other because right. what? I'm not bad to you. You're not bad to me. It's right. just that simple, yeah. really. And I don't think, you know, like since the first time I met you, we don't see it like that. You know, I don't see, I don't count my black friends or my gay friend no. or my trans. It's just they're either friends or they're, or they're, not. they're not. And I, I dislike black people equally as white people. Absolutely. You know, there's no, there's no bias in there. But I think an important part to talk about here is how amazingly well dogs and police officers are protecting people because a primary, a primary area of crime is under funded areas, poor areas, Absolutely. right? So I'd like to talk about that a little bit. And and that's that's a good point. That's a good point because, but what's funny though is that nine times out of ten, they're not the ones talking. Mm -hmm. It's someone talking for them. Yeah, I remember when I first started this new job, and I was in New York. We were in New York, and over the course of that weekend in New York, there were like eighteen shootings in this neighborhood. Wow! And it was right after New York PD had just stopped. They had just uh, disbanded their street crimes unit and these other units, and they had like eighteen shootings. There was a child killed, and uh, I remember watching the news, and these black ministers came on the news. And they're like, look, we're talking to you NYPD. We're not the ones who told you not to be over here in our neighborhood. We need you here. Yeah. We didn't call for defunding you to be in our neighborhood. We need you guys here. We need your help here. And that's, and that's the thing. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. If you actually sit down and talk with folks that live in the neighborhood, yeah. there's a good relationship with them and police, mm -hmm. a very good relationship. For you sure. know, when I came on the job, the majority of my training officers were white officers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we worked in uh, the Southeast division. Okay. And, these guys had a, they, they, they knew who's who in the zoo. Mm -hmm. They knew the grandmothers. They knew the mothers. And there was respect there. Sure. There was respect. There were people that would fix dinner for, on Christmas and invite these guys over. And all of us over because there was respect sure. there. The neighborhood would come down to our stations on if we worked holidays and bring food and stuff because there was respect there. Sure. And, as a, and they're letting us know we appreciate you being here. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. and that's the thing that I, I think that uh, doesn't get pushed out as much. I agree. I agree. It doesn't get pushed out to the yeah. forefront. You I know? agree. But it's just it's just stoking because I think it's an easy way to get attention now. It is. You know, we talked about the dog training positive only. We talked about this. And it's just this. It's just the more radical you become on one side, the more attention you're going to get because like, oh, that's crazy. And, and I think that's what's scaring us. And that is a scariness, though. But again, they go back to things that happened t- uh, 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 a long time ago. Sure. I mean, for example, OK, one of the things in the bill is about using dogs during protests. Yeah. Okay. You don't see that here. No. That's not that's that's yeah. against our department policy. Right. That's not happening here. Yeah. So if it's not happening, it, why are you bringing we'll that bring up? up? Why are you adding that to it? Mm-hmm. Because you're trying to get something to stoke that fire. Yep. You know, everyone can remember back to the civil rights era when dogs are being used against black folk. Sure. And yeah. I get that. Yeah. But that's not happening. Well, you can go all the way back. You can say, well, in Nazi Germany, against exactly. Jews. Exactly, against and Jews, then, exactly. And now in this bill, it talks about the slave trade. Exactly. I mean, we're just, I think it's picking at straws. It I mean, is. I'm sorry. It is. And, it's, and if, you're going, if you're going to put a bill forward, if you're going to talk about the issues, yeah. then let's talk about the current issues. Yeah. What are the dogs currently doing? Well, yeah. How are the dogs currently being used? Yeah. Because I can sit down with them and explain to them. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you how the dog's being used. A suspect uh, commits a crime. The police go to make contact with that suspect. That suspect decides to either fight or get away. A perimeter is set up. They call the police in. The canines come. They go search for the suspect. Mm-hmm. It's pretty simple. Yeah. You know, and, and just because I'm a cop and I'm pro-dog doesn't right. mean that I'm, I'm not pro-human. Right. You know, I right. don't like to see people being hurt unjustly. Sure. You know, so do I think it's okay to have four or five officers on top of a guy? No. And all of a sudden I bring a dog and walk him up and put the dog on for paying compliance? No, yeah, I don't think that's not. okay. Yeah, yeah. No, and I think if you talk to most canine handlers, they're like, yeah, right. no, that's not okay. Right. And that's exactly. the thing they're not putting out, though. They're, not, they're yeah. not putting out that we're professionals here. Yeah. So let me ask you this question. The guy who wrote this, I think it's an, he's an assemblyman named Jackson or something. Um, did he talk to any police a guy with your experience? Of course Tony. not. You don't think he did? No. no. Because I would have thought, what, what would you have told him if he would have come to you? I would tell him exactly what I'm telling you right now. We mm-hmm. sat down and talked about the issues. Okay, what's, what's your current issue? Mm-hmm. If he says, well, I don't like the dogs being used during protest. Oh, great. Okay. Let's knock that one off because we don't do that. Okay. What's your next issue now? Right. Well, I, I don't like uh, suspects being bit. Well, I don't either. I don't like suspects <laughs> being shot. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it yeah. happens. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's part of the, it's, it's, it's the course of business, mm-hmm. you know, and, it's, and, I, and I don't say that lightly. No, of course you not. You know, I no. don't say that lightly, but if you if you pick up guns, someone's going to get shot. If you use a dog, someone's going to get bit eventually. Yeah. You know, it's impossible to do that. But one way to not have that happen is when the police stop them initially, give up. Yeah. And we're done with it here. Yeah. You it know, saves a lot. It saves a lot. It's, it does, you know. Yeah. But, and again, though, but the dogs being used doesn't necessarily mean that someone's going to be bit. I think that's a great point, that tw- 20%. Right? Correct. Correct out of 100, so Correct. 20 out of 100, end in a bite. Correct. Now, let's go back to that. How, can we talk about severity of the bites? Yes, we can. Okay, so let's talk about that. The majority of the, so LAPD, the way we do it is... Uh, you do use bark and hold? We do use bark and okay, hold. Okay. We do use bark and hold. But I mean, but again, that's me dictating on suspect's I know, actions. I know. So, and someone's going to, people get bit. Talk, let's talk about that before we get into the other part. So bark and hold means you send the dog, the dog corners, dominates the person, barks and barks and barks. And if that person stands still, should not be a bite. Should not be a bite. Right. But if they fight, try to get away, they're going to get bit. Okay. But here's the thing. And, and let's, I don't want to get hung up on a bark and hold. No, no, no. I don't because either. if I put, if I put our numbers against most people in the most departments in the country, even though we bark and hold, mm-hmm. you're going to find that we probably have more bites than most of these other departments. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is we just search for more people. Right, of course. We find more people. so Bigger population. Yeah, exactly. Bigger population. So I don't want people to sit here and think, oh, they got the bark and hold, so they're the perfect guys. No, no it doesn't work that way. I agree. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, work that way, right? Yeah. So let's talk about the severity of the bites. When the dog goes in and actually does make contact with somebody, how often is it a, let's call it a severe bite? Right. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I can. I can talk yeah. about it yeah, without a doubt. So for us... We have two types of bites. We have uh, a bite that's going to be handled by the canine sergeant in the in the unit. Okay. And that's your every day, go out and find a bad guy. He gets found. And if he or she gets bit, then we're going to do a canine contact investigation. That's the majority of our bites. Okay. But every now and then, we have what we call categorical bites. Mm-hmm. And categorical bites are when a suspect is hospitalized after being bit by the dog. Now, here's the funny thing about that, because when you hear that on the surface, or the suspect was admitted to the hospital after being bit by the dog, what does it make you think? 
uh, like major bite. Exactly. Right. It makes you think it's a major bite. Right. But I can tell you without a doubt, 75 percent, and I'm not even joking on the numbers, 75 to almost 80 percent of the suspects that have to be admitted to the hospital after a dog bite is not due to severe bite. It's due to the fact that they, the doctors want to administer antibiotics overnight. Oh, wow. That's the majority of them. That's the majority of them. Okay. And it's funny because we had one of those. And we're sitting in our, uh, so whenever we have a bite like that, it goes to use of force review board. Mm. You have an assistant chief there or deputy chiefs and commanders. You have the inspector general's office. You have, and again, so all this oversight, mm -hmm. you have, a, you have the inspector general's office. You have the uh, trainers from the academy. Wow. You have the captain of the, the division involved. You're the captain over canine. So all this is a table of about 15 to 20 people mm -hmm. that are going over this one incident. That's wow. much oversight is over this thing. Right. So we're in one of those. And uh, they play the body worn video, which everything is on body worn video. Mm -hmm. That's another that's another piece of oversight. Mm -hmm. And the suspect is screaming like bloody murder. <laughs> and everyone around the table are like, oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, and you would think he was being eviscerated. Right. And I'm just sitting there because I know what the bite looks like already. Sure. And I know I'm, I'm listening and they're going yeah. crazy and everything. Mm -hmm. And it gets to the point, and then the, uh, the force investigation division investigator says, I'll now show you the uh, suspect's injuries. He shows a picture of the suspect's injuries. There were maybe were two little puncture marks and maybe like little welted scratches there. Right. And they're all looking like, I go, yes, he was more afraid. He thought he was being killed, sure. but he wasn't. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, if I'm in a bush and I'm talking, yeah. I'm going to scream too. i screaming too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. But my point to, to mm -hmm. it was he sounded like he was being killed. He, it sounded like bloody murder, yeah. but the injury wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because we're not lingering. Mm -hmm. The dogs aren't on the bite, and we're standing there talking about it. So, what are you going to do tonight? What are right. you going to do? I don't. What are you going to do? Right. No, we're dealing with it right now. Yeah. We're giving commands to the suspect. Mm -hmm. We're giving commands to the dog. Mm -hmm. We're ending this thing pretty quickly. I mean, the average dog bite. If you look around, if you, especially in the state of California, I can't speak for most departments. Sure. You know, but I can speak for a lot of departments here because I train with them. And I do train them. Yeah. The majority of bites are like maybe two to two seconds to six seconds. Sure. That's about how long they, that long it just they last. seems longer. It just seems longer. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. but if, especially if you're in the biting end of, of course. it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It seems longer, yeah. you know, but we're not getting those big time severe bites. Mm -hmm. Now, do they happen? Absolutely. They do. There of are course. times when we have severe bites. Yes. Yeah. The suspect is fighting. He's thrashing. Mm -hmm. You know, that does happen. Sure. Without a doubt, yeah. you know, or it may be a case where the dog is on the bite and the handler's trying to recall the dog and a suspect is holding the dog. Yep. You know, that happens. Yep. I mean, we had one where, the suspect was under a, 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 a stake bed truck that was off its tires. It's kind of like, it's just about so much space underneath it. Mm -hmm. The dog found him there. The dog made contact with him and the handler's trying to get the dog to come out and the suspect is holding the dog. Mm -hmm. And so the bite was more severe in that situation because we had to actually get in there, tase the guy, mm -hmm. make him let go of the dog to get the yeah. dog off. Yeah. So those things happen, yeah. you know, but the majority of those bites aren't that severe. Yeah, but also isn't this, there's two parts I want to talk about. One is, it's and Dave Reaver, the, the from Avalanche, talks about this. It's less than lethal. Yes, like if you were not gonna send a dog, you probably don't have the option to taser somebody. You know, in a trash can. No, without a doubt, hundred yards without away. Without a doubt. So, what's the option? What's the other option? And that's the right. question. So right. you talk about a trash can. So we had a shooting. We had an officer involved shooting. Or under a car. It doesn't matter. But but yeah, we had a shooting once where uh, suspect uh, gets into a shootout. The CHP. They exchange gunfire. He gets away. About a week later, that suspect, uh, an LAPD gang unit, Northeast gang unit, gets behind the same suspect. He's in a stolen car. They light him up. He goes in pursuit. Uh, the suspect crashes, gets out, and he runs away. And they chase after him. Then they decide, okay, he's, we, we lost him. They mm -hmm. set a perimeter up. Dog finds him. K-9 Max and the handler, Gina Holmstrom. She sends Max in. He's, he's searching. He hits a, uh, a roll of trash cans. He comes to one, boom, bark, 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 hitting the trash can. She calls Max back to her. Everyone gets cover because it's an armed suspect. Mm -hmm. They get cover, and all they see is the trash can opens up. The guy looks around like this, and it closes back up. And they're still talking to him. They're still communicating. No dog. Dog's no dog. Back. Dog's back now. Mm -hmm. okay. Trash can opens up. He does that again. He does that about three times. Mm -hmm. The last time the trash can comes open, he comes out with two guns blazing. He ends up hitting one officer. Oh. And my point to that is, can we imagine the outcome if an officer walked up and poked his head in that trash can and that guy is sitting there? Yeah. And here's the thing we're using dogs too. And a lot of people think it's inhumane when I say this, but I mean it. Mm -hmm. 
I never have to tell puppies that mom or dad's not coming home. But human officers, kids, we got to tell them that. Hey, we're sorry. Mom or dad ain't coming home. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's the part they don't put out there. Yeah. They don't understand the amount of lives are being saved because yeah. we use this dog. Yeah. You know, and that's a huge thing. Yeah. I don't like when dogs get hurt. You know, I actually despise it, but I understand yeah. it's, 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 a necess- it's necessary for the game. Yeah. You know, it's necessary. It's going to, if it saves the suspect from being killed and the officer from being killed, then I'm all for it. And I think that's a big piece of what you just said there. Maybe the suspect doesn't get shot by the police exactly. and he gets bit and detained and you can hold back to work. I can't tell you how many suspects that we found where they're there with their gun and because a dog was used, it threw their whole mindset off. Right. Without a doubt. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I've had some, and, and let's, and let's not be, let's not beat around the bush here either. Okay. Mm-hmm. The dog is not super dog. Right. It's not Superman. No, we've had shootings where the dog is actually on the bite and the suspect is still firing at us. Yep. You know, so it's not an end doll to end doll, right. but it gave us that reaction time though. Mm-hmm. It put us at a little bit more distance away from this guy, you know, and, and it's very easy to sit somewhere and want to dictate how the police police. Yep. And it's very easy to do that, yeah. but it ain't so easy when you're the one in that backyard yep. and it's dark and all you got that shotgun in your hand, that pistol in your hand and that dog got in front of you. That's a different ball game. Yeah. Well, that's what they talked about. Remember the movie Sully, the one with the plane they landed yes. on the Hudson River, and they said right. you should have done this, should have done that, and they account for this, but they didn't account for the fact that he had to act that moment. Absolutely. And when a police officer's out there and the, the adrenaline's going, and no matter who you are, skilled fighter, whatever, your adrenaline's pumping. Absolutely. Right. Yes. So I think it's an important point to talk about also how we're using police dogs not only to protect the public. And the police, right. but also the suspect. I want to kind of touch on that a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Like, so I send a dog in. I'm not going to shoot him. I mean, a taser might mess up his heart. I mean, the people have died. People on have died from rare. tasers. People right. have died from beanbag shotguns. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing. Okay, so people have died from beanbags. People have died from tasers. People have died from being choked. We yes. know that those stories. Absolutely. Has anybody ever died from a dog bite? There have been a couple. There have been a few that have died from dog wise, bites. You think? Percentage wise, I'd say. Well, heck, there's only been like two or three out of the hundreds of thousands of dog deployments yeah. in the country. So we could probably say that maybe that would be among the lowest. Yes, r- r- definitely among the lowest. So, yes. Okay, so and and a lot of times those have extenuating circumstances along with it sure. too. It's not so much the, the severity of the bite, right? Understood. You know, those are the things we have to look at as well. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, police dog bites aren't pretty. No, well, no dog bites are pretty. No dog bites are pretty. You know, and more people get bit by, by, pet, by dogs. pet dogs than they do police dogs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ask me sure. how I know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can right. to yeah exactly. You know, <laughs> right. but police work isn't pretty sometimes. Right. But it's a necessity, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and what people don't understand is that just because it's not a necessity to you because you live in this nice neighborhood with yeah. a gated community and so on and so forth yeah. and have private security and private patrol. And your and your and your phone number and home are on a special location list for the police department and sure. for the fire department. That if your number goes out, you're gonna have five cops there. Yep. Well, guess what? What about yeah. my, what about Miss Jackson who don't have that? Yeah. In okay. The inner city. Exactly. Yeah. What about her? What about the people who don't have that? So it's important for them. Yeah. Just because. Yeah. It may not be the thing that you need. Right. You know, and and for a lot of them, I'm gonna bet the, the guy that wrote this, his mm-hmm. only interaction with the police. Well, he's probably not even driving his own car at this point. Yeah, yeah. But his only interaction generally is what? If he yeah. gets stopped for a ticket. Yep, yep. That's his interaction. That's his level of dealing with the police. Yeah. You know, you have people that deal with the police, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, in certain neighborhoods all the time. Yeah. You know, but there are a lot of people who deal with the police, and it's not a bad thing. No. I mean, how many community groups are out there? Sure. At, without a doubt. You know, we had, it's funny, we had a, uh, we had a lawsuit from, an, uh, from a bite with uh, my second dog. And what happened was he was searching for a suspect and he goes into, he's in a garage and I was in the handler at the time, it was another handler at the time, but he goes into a garage and he, uh, the homeowner opened the door and a dog just goes right by him searching. He's just thinking it's open. He starts searching. Well, the handler realizing called his dog back and the homeowner is now kicking at the dog when he's coming by him and the dog bites him on the knee, a little lightweight bite. Yeah. Not, not nothing major at all. Right. But, uh, we ended up, ended up going to court and uh, they never wanted to accept the settlement went to court. But they got they they won some monetary damage in that in that mm-hmm. during that course of that trial. Mm-hmm. But what was funny to me is that when the trial was over, 
the jury, because I, I was a canine expert on that case, right. the jury brought the dog a huge basket of bones and treats <laughs> and this, that, and the other. I'm like, that was awesome. <laughs> no, yeah. it was, though, because right. they understood. Yeah. They understood that they understood what happened. They understood, sure. and, and we weren't saying it, that that should have happened. Right. You know, we owned up to it. Yeah. You know, and that's the other side of the coin, too. You know, talking about owning up to things. He doesn't mention in there we police ourselves. Okay, if you talk to the handlers in LAPD K9 when I was over them, mm -hmm. they would tell you times where I said, Oh, you know what? I'm taking your dog from you. Or, you know what? You're on timeout. Or, mm -hmm. you know what? This job's not for you. Right. Because the actions of one are going to affect the actions of many. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way it is. And there's a standard. And as much as people don't want to believe it or don't want to put it out there, there is a standard to doing police work. Sure. There's a standard to handling dogs, there's a standard <clears throat> yeah. to working dogs. Yeah. And if you fall below that standard, we don't want you. Yep. You know, because this is a professional thing. This is our game. This is what we this is what we enjoy doing. Sure. So if you're not doing it right, we don't want you either. Mm -hmm. And they don't put that out there, though. Well, I think it's always this. It, it, when I grew up, you know, I grew up in Jersey and Florida. Cops were like heroes. Yes. You know, and to me, you guys still are. I mean, right. cops, military, your job really is to keep people safe. Yes. And when I see, you know, I mean, I think police in the inner city is important because those kids have to go to school. They have to and, go to school, and they have to be safe. Yes, every you know, okay, in the in Malibu and you know Beverly Hills and stuff, there's not as much crime. Obviously, right. it's kids coming, right? But there's not as much crime, so you don't have as much police presence. Exactly. And I mean, I seem to think that I mean, maybe it's a myopic view on my side, but I seem to think that you know, you bring food where people are hungry, you bring police where there is crime in order to eradicate that yes. crime, not in order to hurt people who are innocent or or even you know even if it's just you know reducing the fear and instance of crime mm, yeah. you know just just the presence of being there might reduce that you know for sure or you know if these two guys commit a crime and they run from the police and then a helicopter comes out and the perimeter gets set up and dogs go out and we go find these guys yeah you don't know what it might be thinking to somebody else oh yeah. okay note to self yeah just go ahead and give up next time right i won't i won't put myself in that position yep you know but it also it also sends a message though. It sends a message to the bad guy. Yep. Hey, we are going to come for you. Yeah. If you victimized our community members, we're going to come for you. Mm -hmm. And if we need to have dogs find you to do it, we're going to come for you. Yeah. And that's the part they don't put out there though. <clears throat> I agree. Well, so an interesting chat I had with Mike uh, Reaver is going to be on the show next week. Um, is we talked about people say well, why don't you guys use rescue dogs for, you know, police work and this and that? You, we hear it all the time, right. right? But one thing we don't look at is that when rescue dogs were used, like in the South during the civil yes. rights days, these dogs were not trained as nearly no. to the capacity what you guys are dealing with. Nowhere near. They didn't have the training. They didn't have genetics. Right. They didn't have the upbringing. Mm -hmm. Again, I go back. Let's just start the very beginning. Yep. I go back to the times I've gone over it with uh, Dave Reaver, you uh -huh. know, my mentor, my, my hero, mm -hmm. and and Mike, you mm -hmm. know, a real good friend of mine. Those guys are top notch. But I go back to times I've gone with them to purchase police dogs. Mm -hmm. I've been with them, and their job is they make money from selling police dogs. Mm -hmm. If they bring back 80 dogs, they're going to sell 80 dogs. Mm -hmm. If they bring back 85 dogs, they're going to sell them. Mm -hmm. But I've been with them when they're like, you know what? Nah, this dog's not going to do it. Yeah. He needs a little bit more work. He needs a little bit more of this. Yeah. So they're right there. That's where the oversight starts. Mm -hmm. They're choosing certain dogs. The right breeding. Are there any injuries on this dog? Any hidden elements that we don't know about? Mm -hmm. What's the dog's temperament like? You know, is this dog going to be eating everyone up to standing around it? <laughs> right. They're checking all those things. Right, right. Is there, is, there yeah. is there, is you know, is this dog neutral to people? Yeah. You know, is he, is, is he going to be a jerk and trying to bite everybody around him? Sure. We can't use him. Yeah. So there's a process there. Yeah. Which is another reason why I like going to Adler's to get dogs. Mm -hmm. I see them test every single dog they get. Yeah. And when they test those dogs, I'm sitting there watching them. And the one thing I know for sure is that, that dog is going to be a police dog somewhere. Mm -hmm. It may not be for my program sure. or your program, but someone's program. Yeah. And he's going to be a solid dog. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. Now we bring this dog back and then we further test it to select the dog. For the handler. For the handler, and right. In yeah. the department, right. Because now we're testing this. We know the dog has what it takes to be a police dog. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have what it takes to be a police dog in our program. Right. And, and I'll say that our program is pretty strict. Mm -hmm. You know, we we operate in the city of L.A., which is a very litigious arena. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of checks and balances on our canine teams that most canine teams don't have. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to do find and bark. We have to use e-collar. Mm -hmm. 
you know, all these things. We have to have in-house training. We have to have a, tra- a chief trainer. We have to have a training cadre. Body worn video, all these different things. You the know? dogs have the video too. No, we have. The oh, you have the video. Right, right, right. But all these different things, all these checks and balances over this thing, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of dogs can't survive that arena. Mm-hmm. A lot For of sure. dogs don't have that. And the other side of it too, though, is that I need to have a confident dog. Yeah, I need to have a dog that can go out and, and search on his own and have the confidence to not be a jerk and, and bite somebody out of fear. Mm-hmm. You know, to have the confidence to go out and find someone yeah. and then dominate that one person and stay with them. Yep. So that's the other side of it too. So we need certain dogs to do it. Just like we need certain cops to be cops. Sure. You know, it's the same thing. It's a temperament. Yeah. It's a temperament thing. Can every dog can do it, yep. you know, and they might look the part, but they may not be the part. And you're, so the other thing too is, so they're buying these dogs in Europe. That's no secret. Right. They're selected, very strictly selected. I, yes. I know that. And I've been to Adler Horse on, on by day when, right. when these, when these dogs are, there's lines of police cars. Yes. Like I said, certain dogs are better for, Maybe Kern County. Exactly. Maybe LAPD, maybe exactly. LA Sheriff, or maybe Laguna Niguel. Exactly. Right? So th- that's the thing. But then once the dog is placed with that officer, that department, now we're going to enter the training realm. Yes. Right? That's something that we're not talking about. And then after the training realm, realm at Adler Horse, which I'm going to talk with Mike about, and we don't need to get into it, um, now you're taking the dog, and now you're going to add your training that continues. These dogs are continuously Continues trained. training. Right? And, and for us, you know, it, it, it's 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 even it goes a little bit deeper than what the post requirements are. Mm-hmm. So post has a standard, mm-hmm. the California Peace Officer Standard Training of what a well trained police dog should do, mm-hmm. and we go well above that. You now we have two certifications. So our first certification is called a limited certification. That means the dog has done everything that's needed, been through all the training, has passed all the tests of a fully certified dog, but it hasn't proven itself in the field to us. Hasn't shown us what we can do in the real world environment. Okay, it's shown us everything we need to see in the training environment. So we give it a limited, a limited certification, which means that this dog can only be used to search for unarmed suspects. Okay, it hasn't proven itself to anyone yet, and it hasn't. So we want to get out there and see how it works in the real world, you know, mm-hmm. and a real world environment. So that and he has to have an all canine search team. Okay, all canine handlers on the search team. Most search teams we we mix patrol guys in mm-hmm. with our search team. And he has to have a trainer on the team. So just in case there's any hiccups on that search, the trainer's there. So uh-huh. these are all the oversights that are in place. Wow. And how long does that go before the, he gets to level two? <clears throat> that depends on the dog and the, the level of work the dog has received. It's that not is. really a, a quantity. It's more of a quality. quality. You know, mm-hmm. The dog shows me that he has a strong nose. and can find, uh, He can find someone that we never would have found mm-hmm. unless we had a dog. And that's real important. You know, when we go out as officers, we have... There's one thing that hurts us, and it's our ability to reason. Sure. I can look at an object and go, ah, you know what? No one's hiding in that thing. It's too small. <laughs> right. Dog didn't think that. Yeah. The dog goes up and sniffs it. Oh, rough, rough, rough. Yeah, There's yeah. somebody in here. Yeah. You know, and those are the things that, you know, these dogs go out and find guns. Because suspects run and throw guns. They, that nose is phenomenal. Yeah. It's phenomenal, yeah. you know? And so, and that's how it is with, with the human side of things, you know? Yeah. Someone's hiding in someone's neighborhood. The dog, we had, a, I had a search once. Where um, I was, I was kind of newer in the unit, and I was uh, living in I was living in seventy seven division, one of our south central south LA divisions. Mm-hmm. And I hear a call come out about a burglary in progress, and I'm listening to it. So I come on the air and say, "Hey, uh, airship over southwest K nine sixteen, you know, I'm on the air. I can start heading down that way." And then uh, I turn to the attack frequency, and, I, and the sergeant down there says, "Oh no, we don't need K nine. We're going to search it ourselves. These guys are long gone." Well, what happened was the lady next door, her neighbors are out of town, and she's watching the house. Well, she saw this. She saw two people and two individuals enter the house and they bring a TV outside. It's on their back porch. They go back inside and they bring a VCR. Well, I just dated myself. So, you know, hold on, I'm not fucking VCR. <laughs> they bring a VCR. I can go before VCR. Yeah, right, I can't do but <laughs> They bring a VCR and they put it on their back porch and then they disappear back into the house. Well, she calls the police. The police come and uh, they search the house and they come out and she goes, they're in there. They never left. They're, they're, they're inside that house. Wow. And they go, no, no, we checked the house. They're good. Because she goes, well, why did they leave the stuff they stole? They're, they're in the house. So meanwhile, I was already en route there. So I get there. And uh, the sergeant hits me. goes, hey, you know, just, just make her happy. Can we just go ahead and uh, just run the dog through the house? I mean, this, this, these guys are long gone. Eh, roger that. I go in and find two guys. Wow. I go in and find two suspects. So And before that, officers had searched that they same house? searched that same house. A complete search? Complete search. And found nothing? And found nothing. But the thing is, our human minds right. make us reason things. Yeah, so the first guy I found, he's under a couch 
And the, this is a house that was built in like the 1920s, you know, early the, early, the late 20s, early 30s. Well, it had the floor furnace. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look down into it, it's just a big furnace contraption. Well, you can't see to the sides of it. And there's a crawl space. The guy's hiding to the side of that. He got it in there. His buddy covered him back up with the couch. And lo and behold, there he is. Yep. Find number one. Keeps searching the house. And the dog is working. He gets to like an outlet. He's going crazy. He's scratching an outlet. He's barking at the wall. He's barking and barking. Like, what the hell? Like an electrical outlet? Like an electrical okay. outlet. He's going crazy. And so we're like, what the heck? I go, maybe, maybe is there an attic here? And they go, yeah, well, maybe he's in the attic. So we get there in the attic. And, you know, we search the attic. We search it again. Well, we happen to look over, and it wasn't me that saw. It was a probationary officer. Go, hey, that that um, that insulation looks a little weird over there. I didn't notice it the first time we we're here. Hmm. So we go over and we move the insulation, and it's just the walls. I mean, just the, you can't see anything. Yeah. So we get a broomstick and we start going, think, 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 <laughs> bonk. Oh, I'm right here. The guy is inside the walls, hidden like that. Oh my god. Never would have found this guy. Never would have found him. And the 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 crutch of this is that. The people were out of town. Right. I get that part. But let's just say they weren't. Yeah. Let's say they weren't out of town. And let's say they were out there waiting for the police to finish searching their house that someone had broken into. And then we all leave. And they go back in there. With their kids. With their kids. Exactly. Those are the things they don't think about. Those are the things yeah. they don't talk about. Yeah. And this is in an area of Los Angeles. Absolutely. That's notoriously Absolutely. poor and yes. minority. Absolutely. Right? So yes. this is one of the things that I think... You know, I don't care if you're black or white or Jewish or Christian or Muslim, whatever. When you're screaming stuff, it's got to make sense. It's got to make sense. Right? So when you're telling me, and uh, this guy is a black guy screaming this, you know, everybody wants to say, oh, we have to believe. But he's wrong. He's dead wrong. Dead wrong. On, no, this. on this subject, he is dead wrong. And I don't know the guy from Adam. No, I don't either. But I, I know on this subject, he's dead wrong. He's dead wrong. One of the things he said, which I thought was interesting, and you and I both dealt with dog bites, he said... Um, they equated a police canine bite to an officer swinging a baton with three centimeter spikes attached. No. I mean, I've seen dog okay. bites. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? Yeah. I'd rather you have your dog bite me than you swing a baton <laughs> yeah. with spikes yeah. on it and hit or me no with it. Or no spikes. Or no spikes. Thank you. Okay? Yeah. yeah. I'd rather yeah. you have the dog bite me. Without a doubt. But I mean, again, I think this is all this stuff that's just stoking, you know, this this regression back to, okay, the civil rights era, it was horrible. Uh, uh, you know, slavery, a horrible time. But we don't need to bring that in when we're not dealing with it. And then bringing it in to do something like putting people, especially people in poor under undercovered areas, in more danger. Oh, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're pandering right now. For sure. You know, we're pandering and, and we're making it sound like the sky is falling. Yeah. And the sky actually isn't falling. No. Because my next question would be, well, where was that study conducted? Yeah. Where did they show <laughs> you were a dog bite? Who was it? Who's the guy that took that, did that for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to have the dog bite this arm, but I'm going to have you swing the baton with spikes on this arm. Yeah. Let's see how it looks. Yeah. It, come on. You, you're making these things up. You make it sound a lot more grandioso yeah. because you're trying to pander to people, you're trying to get their, you're trying to stoke the fire of the fear. And I think that's one of the things that happens, and I've been fighting this online battle with um, between dog training, but this is one of those things that if I, as a white guy, go, hey, this is stupid, right? Then people go, oh, well, you're racist. Right. And, and, and I, I resent that. I, there's nothing worse to me to tell me I'm racist or, or homophobic or whatever it is. Stupid is stupid. Stupid is stupid. You know, and this to me shows me that this is really pandering to people and it's just trying to get people who are going to just glob on to this idea because Absolutely. you know and white people do it all the time they go well i don't want to be seen as racist so i'm gonna yeah i gotta go along with it right this is a dangerous policy for minority people who we should be protecting because they're living in areas that might be more dangerous well, the, you know black people in beverly hills yeah, aren't that worried about without it. a doubt but it's <clears throat> also dangerous for police officers right well we're going to get into that too because what happens when you something like this comes out you get all these departments who have these knee-jerk reactions. They get mm. this fear into them, and they start ending programs or stopping there, so putting more limitations on it. But the problem with that, too, though, is that oftentimes they're not being any better than that politician because mm -hmm. you're not boots on the ground here. Yeah. And you're just afraid of what they're saying, so you're going to, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to do yeah. this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to make myself safer. Or are you really, though? I didn't even think about it from that angle. I thought you meant it's more dangerous for police officers because the people who are, you know, they're going to be put in more danger without having a dog. Oh, without a doubt. But but I like what you're talking yeah. about. Oh, that, right? Yeah, but my, that's my fear because, again, yeah. you know, you, these these departments have knee-jerk reactions when mm -hmm. things like this happen. Yeah, they have because they're afraid, They're right? afraid. Yep. Yeah, they're afraid. And the problem with it, though, is that it's a dog. Mm -hmm. And not too many people on the police departments know how 
a dog works, right. how he's trained, mm -hmm. what to expect. You know, even them, mm -hmm. the majority of the bosses, they only know what? Right. Well, the dog bites. Yep. That's all they know. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only time it comes across their plate. Sure. You know, the again, the 400 searches that occurred, no one got bit. Mm -hmm. They don't come across your plate. So you don't right. even think about those. Yep. You only worry about the three that got on your plate. Yep. And that becomes problematic. You know, Huge. and so that and that's where these kind of bills kind of hurt. You know, you get in our department, no, our department, we've had some knee jerk reactions to dog bites. Yep. There's no secret. You know, we had a handler that had a dog and uh, the dog had a categorical bite with another handler. Mm -hmm. And the categorical bite wasn't a bite where the guy was uh, thrashed or, or a lot of bad bite. It was mm -hmm. because of antibiotics. OK, well, th that handler moves on to another unit, moves on. The dog gets handed to another, another handler. Now, this handler is working the dog. And this is how deep it goes. And people understand this. This handler is now working the dog. His dog gets a bite, finds a suspect. The guy gets five stitches. Okay, I mean, have we? Do you, do, does anyone actually realize the size of five, five stitches? stitches. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. he gets five <laughs> stitches. And that's because that doctor decided to stitch it. I've seen bites that were probably larger than five stitches. They just say, hey, we're going to drain it and yeah. butterfly it so yeah. you're away. But he got five stitches. This dog was removed from the field. The handler was removed from the field. The handler was sent to behavioral sciences. Here, we're going to see the behavioral sciences to be interviewed by a psychologist. Wow. I'm just saying, this, but these are the things that yeah. go, these are the things that happen that yeah. this guy doesn't see. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. the world doesn't see. There is oversight. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so, if this is happening before this happened, right. what do we think this does to now police administrator's mind when they yeah. read that? Yeah. And that's the scary part of it because yeah. they make these knee-jerk reactions yeah. and these knee-jerk reactions can put your officers in danger. Yeah. Well, this is something that Stoops and I talked about too, because so many times you've got boots on the ground doing the hard work, and you've got administrators who are just kowtowing to the political BS. Right, constantly. and that's and that's a problem. Right, that's a problem. Yeah, we can't, we can't, we just, we we can't operate that way. Yeah, you know, I, I think the best course of action is to be honest with them for sure. Be open and honest with them, hundred percent. You know, and, and and if and don't get me wrong, if someone does wrong or does bad, and they're the police. Oh, let's beat the shit out of them. Absolutely. I'm yeah, all yeah, for yeah. it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I will take you behind the woodshed and sure. put wood to you. Yeah. I'm all for that. Of course. Okay. But if they're just doing their jobs, then let's be honest about it. Yeah. yeah. Let's have the honest conversation. Yeah. You know, and I would be, my first question would be, how come this guy hasn't talked to anyone boots on the ground? Well, that's the problem, right? So you're making a law, just like people with dog training, every, they come down, they make laws, but they've never really handled the dog. Exactly. Right. And the amount of good things that come out of police work in general but police dogs is really pretty freaking amazing it is very amazing you know it is very amazing now are there guys that do stupid things with dogs absolutely yeah. absolutely so for the handler audience mm -hmm. this is their wake-up call for sure that you need to be working accordingly you need to be working according to training yep. you know Good training. Yeah. You know, you need to be on your P's and Q's because Big Brother is watching. They're always watching. Always. And I'm not saying that you should be doing better because they're watching. That should be your standard anyway. Moral standard. Yeah, that should be your moral standard yeah. anyway. And yeah. if, you, if you're not about that, if you're only here because you got a cool T-shirt and a fucking take-home car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then for sure. <laughs> for sure. We don't need you hurting us yeah. with this. Yeah. You're, you're causing this for us. Yeah. You but know? this is not only about police. You've got police officers who... Just abuse pulling people over. Yes. Or, you know, abuse writing tickets. When exactly. It's, it, but it's in every field. It's right? in every field, yes. It's, it's dog trainers, it's bakers, it's doctors. It's, it's in everything. every field. Yes, you in know? every field you're going to find that, without a doubt. Yeah. You know, but if it's something bad, let's call do it with the bad. Let's, let's call it out and do it with it. I'm all for that. Yeah. But let's not just use this big, huge paintbrush and paint the whole thing. Right, right. And say, okay, now we're not going to use dogs now. Because yeah. who are you really hurting when you do that? Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's the thing they don't think about. Who are you really hurting when that happens? Yeah, for sure. Okay, you're not ha you're not hurting the guy that's sitting in his house no. with the gated community. Yep, yep. you're yep. hurting the people who live in these neighborhoods where they're being victimized. Yeah, where crime is high. Yeah, you know. So I want to ask you a question about that. With with for example, LAPD because that's your your scope of experience for so many many years. Is there there's one canine division, right? Well, besides no, SWAT. Well, so we have our we have Metro Canine, which okay. is where I worked, and those dogs are used for locating suspects right and then you have uh bomb bomb squad has their own dogs the bomb okay. unit has their own dogs tsa and bomb dogs okay and then narcotics division has their own dogs okay so we have three different units okay so because lapd is a very organic division no department yes so everything specialized there 
Got you know, it. which is, I, I think is a good thing. You know, I think so too. our dogs only focused on one thing. Well, we had two. We had the, we also have the gun detection dogs in our unit as well. So if you're in wherever your station, wherever that division is, and there's a, are you like a down near downtown? Or? Yeah. So what happens or, is our okay. typical work night was that, uh, we do our workout in, we get a little food in our bellies, we go train. Okay. Uh, paperwork at Metro. We go do paperwork at Metro from the night before, a couple nights oh, before. Okay. And then we go train in mass. We go someplace and train. We train every night. Every night? Every night we're training. Wow. Again, another oversight piece. Because yeah. how am I going to know how you operate in the field? Because I see it in training. Okay. So and you're I'm, not just in a car driving around. No, no, dogs. no. We're, we're out training. Oh, our guys okay. are out training. They're doing their thing. And then a call comes out. We go to that call in mass. Mm. Or if we have new dogs in training and the call comes down, we realize, oh, it's just a couple block perimeter. We might send a couple of dogs out there. Okay, you guys go. The rest of us going to stay here training. Wow, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's an interesting thing. So your, your dogs, LAPD, I got it yes. clear, are every night they're, it's, they're doing some training. Stuff. Correct. And then if there's a call, then you're sending them out to To go to the search, go. exactly. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. So yeah. that's a lot of training. It is. But, you know, but it, 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 we have 19 dogs too, though. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, and again, I, we've talked about all the time. Mm -hmm. These things are perishable. Sure. You know, but I'm keeping it. I, I want to make it as much as possible muscle memory for the handler mm -hmm. and conditioned memory for the dog, condition for the dog. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're doing this stuff over and over again. And it's just the basics. We're not doing anything wise. We're not, yeah. you know, we're not the military. So we're not flying out of helicopters with the dog <laughs> strapped to our chest. Right. We're just doing seeking. You should find. You know, and how many like so for the average police dog and handler, it's an eight hour shift, 10 hour shift, 10 out four, four, 10 hour. Four, shift? Ten, yes. OK. And so they'll be training, hanging out or right. whatever. Maybe they get deployed that night. Maybe they don't. Right. Do they get to how often would you say LAPD? Dogs I say, well, deployed? shoot, as of late, they've been pretty busy. But yeah. I mean, even when I was there, we were getting deployed probably three or four times, you know, a week. At oh, least. OK, a week. Not yeah, at least, night. yeah. Some nights we get deployed four or five times at night, right. you know, you know, but we can almost guarantee we're going to deploy it at least once every day that week that mm -hmm. we're working. Yeah. yeah. So if we're looking at dogs as far as doing the greater good, I would, I'm going to jump out and say that I think they're protecting more people than they're ever hurting. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you know, and, and they're a good image. They're doing great, great service for, for, absolutely for the public. Absolutely. Especially for underserved communities. Absolutely. Right. They're, no, they're, they're definitely taking care of more people than they're putting injuries on. Yeah. That and goes the, without doubt. And the dogs we see, and like we talked about with, with um, Adler Horse, you know, these dogs are selected for genetics. Yes. And then they're trained and trained. I mean, I've been there. I've, nev there's, I've never seen a dog accidentally bite. If they're just in their normal mode, they're, just, they're out there. You know, they're right. Exactly. You know, but if a dog is, you know, is triggered, is on, is yes, on fire. Yes, it's a different ball game. Different Absolutely. ball game. Yes. like if you and I are in a fight. Absolutely. And I grab you, you might hit me. Absolutely. You know, but yes. the, for the most part, those dogs are just really easy. Exactly. And, that, and that's why we train so much because... We're trying to put those dogs in those positions mm -hmm. over and over again to get that conditioning. Yeah. And, and also for the handler to be able to see the dog's behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, know when his dog is getting hit, his or her dog is getting too keyed up. Yep. When they back off a little bit, when they dial off, you know. Mm -hmm. But to go back to your point, you said that the dogs, um, they protected more citizens than they hurt people. I'm going to go so far to say they protected more suspects than they've hurt as well. I like that. Okay, they have. I mean, yeah. there's there are yeah. many suspects who things could have been worse had a dog not been used to find them. Yeah. And that's without a doubt. And that's yeah. not, I'm not making it up. And I'm not, I'm not telling you what I think I'm telling you from What's boots fact? on the ground search is facts. There are yeah. more people that have been going to jail with handcuffs on and no injuries because the dog was being used. And so that's a we, fact. So if we want to really educate this assemblyman Jackson and the people, cause I want to get this podcast up ASAP. Um, we have to understand that police dogs are there as a less than lethal force and often a less than even anything force. Yes. Right. There, there, Absolutely. There's no force. Absolutely. Because they can get there, they can locate, they can dominate, they can with they can keep a suspect, and there can be zero bites, zero taser, zero billy club, zero choking, zero anything, because the dog is there. Sometimes those people will be afraid, they'll stop. Police can go ahead and handcuff them. And and, and let's take it even a step further. Cool. Let's not forget that segment of suspects that before the dog's even deployed, mm -hmm. once they realize the dog's about to be used, oh, hey, <laughs> yeah. also the dog shows up, you hear one bark, oh, okay. I'm done. So you're serious now. Yeah. 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 Why don't you say it in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> dog. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, and those are the things, again, that don't get fed. Yeah. The only thing that gets fed is the stuff that's going to stoke fire, sure. it's going to stoke fear, it's going to cite people, yep. and it's going to cause division, and that's the problem with it. Yeah, I mean, this is the conversation I had with 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 John Cook, who is a great guy, friend yeah, of yours, really good man, really yes. up to you. And it's this thing that we've got to stop these 
I mean, imposing a bill and infusing stuff like this hurts black and brown people is BS. It is I mean, BS. Yeah, it's just it's just one way to get for for somebody to think. I'm, I, I'm not politically correct, but for oh, the white guy's not going to go against. No, I'm going to go against because I think it's BS. Right. In honesty, my friends who are black or or brown or whatever you want to call it now, they're more worried about this BS than my white friends who are living in, in Malibu. Of course. Right? Because they're course. saying, shoot, our neighborhoods are going to be more dangerous now because this knucklehead is doing this. Right. So I hope he watches this. I hope he gets educated. And if he contacts me, I'm going to give him your cell number. And I hope he does this. If you really want the truth, go to these neighborhoods, knock on doors, and find out what exactly is their biggest pet peeve or what they really want done. Yep. And I'm going <laughs> to bet you... Yeah. That ain't it. That ain't it. Yeah. <laughs> they got a whole list of laundry list of things for you to work on. Yeah. That probably won't be it. Yeah. But here's the thing. Have you heard of this guy before the bill? No. Right. Neither did I. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. I got to find some way yeah. to get out there. Yeah. You know, and, and, yeah. and that's the sad thing about it. But this bill is, it's bad news. And I love for this guy to call me. Yeah. I love for us to sit down and talk yeah. about it and, 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 you know, and guy to guy have a talk yeah. about it yeah he either some education or bring him here with all three talks. yeah exactly you know and and so that's something that we do you know I always did we got new police commissioners mm -hmm. which is our civilian oversight sure every time we got a new commissioner i would invite them out to the canine field mm. and i show them how the dogs work how they're trained because they're going to be making decisions based on you know they're going to have oversight yeah so i want to educate them and and it's funny how once they get educated you can see a level of understanding like sure. oh that's not what i thought now, there's some who just way out there. Just you're not going to change their mind. That's right. just the way it is. Yeah. But a lot of them, they're like, "Oh, that's not at all what I thought it was." Yeah, you know. And so that's why I hope this guy kind of gets that too. Well, it's anything. It's it's opening your doors. Yes, you know, to you know, like I mean, people who are you know transgender or gay. Open your door. Talk to somebody. Absolutely. We're all human beings. All human Every beings. one of us bleeds red. Exactly. You know? and we are. I think that's important. So I, I love this chat. And I want you to come back. I, I haven't seen you since last time. I know. Left well, and we always say that. We're going to do it again. <laughs> We're going to do it again. All right. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to hold you to it, man. All, all right. right. Thanks, all man. All right, brother. I appreciate it. <laughs>